So we're going to we're going to talk about derivatives as a rate of change. So we did rules before, which were more I don't want to say algebraic rules because they're not algebraic; they're calculus rules, but they feel very algebraic. But this will be more about what the derivative actually means uh, as it relates to uh, real-world applications. So we saw how it worked. Now we're going to look at uh, how to interpret it. So what does this equation represent? Area of a circle related to the radius. So this tells you how the area relates to a radius. Now from this equation, well let's write that down. The area of a circle is related to its radius by this equation. So we can answer more questions using calculus than we could without using calculus. So with calculus, we could ask the question, well, if I change the radius, how does that change the area? And the way we figure that out is we take a derivative of our equation. So we could ask, how fast does the area change? With respect to the radius, when the radius is 5 meters. Yeah. It's not related, I mean, it is kind of related to his class. In my studies class, they, the professor Turnbull didn't use a radius, but he did like five, uh, 5 over 6 d cubed or something like that. It's, uh, you know what I'm talking about? No? Um, never mind. This <laughs> don't even think of that. Uh, okay. So we had some different way to relate the area to the radius? Uh, So this is where they're actually equal. Uh, there's, I don't, know, I don't know what he what he was talking about, so I can't comment on something I don't know about. Although that doesn't stop most people. Okay, so let's look at this question with respect to the radius. So I want to know how does area change compared to how does the radius change? So if I know that radius is uh, five meters and whether I increase it or decrease it, I want to know if you, if you know how much you're going to increase it by, how does that change the area? And if we think intuitively about this, the five meters is important. Let's look at a tiny circle where the radius, let's say this radius is one. And let's say we increase the radius by, we double our radius, we increase it by one. So if I increase it by one, our new radius will be two. And the area will be, uh, it looks more like a square, but that you'll pick up all that extra radius right there, or all the extra area right there. Let's say the area started out much bigger, like five. And I increased the area by, w or the radius by one. So that's five, that's a one. and I shade in the amount that increased. Which shaded amount is larger? The first or the second? The second. The second's way bigger. 
just estimating I could probably fit the first increase in like the first fourth of the second increase. The uh, first increase is relatively small compared to the second one. And if I had a huge circle, a huge radius, like a thousand, and I just increased it by one, I would pick up a huge amount of area. There would be a basically a one inch wide strip, except it would be way, way longer. It would go around, uh, it would go really far around that huge circle. So it really depends on how big your radius is. If you know it's going to increase by one, it's going to have a different effect on the area. So we're going to look at that uh, precise effect. And the way we're going to do it, we're also going to use calculus. We're going to take a derivative with respect to the radius. So we're going to take a d dr of the equation above. The reason we're using the letter r, or the variable r, is because I want to know how does the area change compared with how the radius changes, or with respect to how the radius changes. So we're going to take d dr of the equation. So this is an operator we're going to apply to the entire equation. And of course, what you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. So we're taking derivative of both sides of the equation. You should, you'll never be taking derivative of one side of an equation if you start with an equation. So on the left side, there's really nothing to do. I don't have to do anything. This is just dA or d, dr of a. And the second way you can write it is dA over dr. And it means the exact same thing. Another way to write it is a prime. So I could write a prime. The only prime is a nice notation because it's the fastest to write, but it doesn't tell you with respect to what variable. So if I just see a prime, I don't know if it's with respect to r or some other variable. So if you use prime notation, you have to know what variable is uh, your derivative with respect to. And now on the right side, pi r squared, I'm going to take ddr of pi r squared. So I could go with product rule, except I don't have to get that in, in depth. What rule can I use instead of product rule? I will need the power rule, definitely, to deal with the square power. But before I can break into that, all right, what rule do I need first? Multiple rule. Yeah, constant multiple rule. So pi is a letter, a Greek letter, but it's a constant letter. So we're going to move that outside. So it's going to be pi d dr of r squared. And now this is super easy. It's just like d dx of x squared. You're, you're going to bring the power down, and you get 2r. This is probably the most useful notation, the dA over dr, for this particular situation. You can't, what's that? Uh, do we not carry down the pi because uh, Oh, no, that should be there too. Okay. Let's write it in 2 pi r. Yeah. 2 pi r. Absolutely bring down the pi. 2 pi r is another familiar circle property. What does that represent? That's the circumference. Let's think of that intuition from the picture we just saw, wherever our picture disappeared to. Think about the width. I try to draw uh, basically a width one strip around that circle. And if you think about the area, the area of that strip is very close to the circumference multiplied by the width of the strip. Not exactly, but that's a really good estimate. And it is not a coincidence that we just saw the circumference appear. So what was the point of pulling the pi out? First, you put the pi back in to 2 pi r. You pull the pi out in front, and then you put it back right back in the middle. Oh, uh, it can be pi 2 r. Why 
I had to pull it out at all, though, because it didn't change the answer if you pulled it out. Did it? Well, I had to take a derivative. So I had to, I used the constant multiple rule to get the pi out of the way, basically. If you have the pi, though, you can't do the power rule. I can, but I need to, I want to take the derivative of the r squared. The reason I'm allowed to just go ahead and do it is because the constant multiple rule says the pi doesn't matter. It's just a multiple. So that let me bring the pi up front and take the derivative of r squared. This would be very different. I would have something very different if it was, uh, maybe sign's not a good example. We haven't done trig yet. Um, So if I was doing this derivative, I can't do the same move right here because it's not constant. So the fact I needed to use the fact that that first term was constant. So this would definitely not be the constant multiple rule because there's an R in the first term. So that's, does that answer your question? So I had I I need to take the derivative of this whole thing, and the way I do it is break it into smaller pieces. So uh, not related to the actual equation, but you replaced x with r in the definition or uh, in the derivative. So what do the d's stand for if the r and x stand for radius? Uh, d basically stands for derivative or differential. So that, it'll always look like d, d something. So it'll look like d over d insert variable in that spot. And whatever that is, it'll generally be x. Sometimes uh, it'll be a different letter like r. Or um, I could have taken a dda here instead. Or we're going to see in related rates. And actually very soon there'll be time derivatives that I'll be looking at. So t is another very common variable you'll be taking derivatives with. And I could treat this like a fraction and write it as dA equals 2 pi r dr. And we set our radius equals 5 above. So in this form, if you knew how much r changed by, in the pictures I drew, it changed by 1. So you could uh, estimate how much the area would change by using that. And if I write it the original with a dA over dr, in this form it tells you uh, the ratio of the change in the area to the change in the radius. So they tell you the same information, just set up in a slightly different form. And just looking at this, 10 pi is... Um, 31.4 something, 10 times pi. So this says when the radius, uh, the area is going to be changing 31.4 times more than the radius will. So if the radius grows by 1, the area is going to grow by 31 times more than that, approximately. And now we're going to look at motion and a lot of physics. Any physics majors? No? What? Any physics majors? No? Chemistry and biology are way cooler? <laughs> All right. So motion along a line. So we're going to have displacement, which is basically position. And velocity, and also speed, acceleration, and jerk. So I am intentionally writing these on four separate lines for an important reason.
So we'll start with displacement. So we've been using the letter H to mean a small positive quantity, basically how much X is changing. And in especially science and engineering, they use the delta variable. So delta T means change in T, or change in time for us. So the delta means change in and the T is for time. And that's not the best delta. So now you should be thinking, well, I call it another letter delta. They look nothing like this delta. How could they both be delta? That's exactly right. This is capital delta. The other one's uh, lowercase delta. It kind of looks like cursive versus, I don't know, not cursive. But this is a capital delta. And the other one is lowercase delta. And they look completely different. Knowing the small one doesn't help you at all know about the big one. It's kind of like capital A and lowercase a. They're nothing alike, but it doesn't stop us from knowing they're the same letter. So we got change in time. And so our change in displacement, so we'll take a, let's say our displacement function and we'll use s of t for our displacement function just a word of warning my s looks kind of like my five I don't think I'll be using any fives for a while so this will look just like a five and unfortunately we have to stop here.